Hey guys, how are you doing? Happy Wednesday. It's a rainy one here in Source, Connecticut. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. And today, I'm going to be doing my list of six on the Star Wars movies. Now, what motivated me to do this list was that, you know, there's been a lot of news and a lot of anger and geekdom over George Lucas's remastering of the Star Wars series for Blu-ray and the changes that he's making to the film to the films of course i like with a lot of the changes especially with the vader and return of the jedi screaming no when he throws the emperor you know all that stuff i agree i agree with the fanboys on this one that is a little bit upsetting but i'm not going to be too angry about it a because i already have all the six star wars movies on dvd i don't have a blu-ray player so i'm not going to worry about it so <clears throat> to sort of commemorate the star wars saga being re-released on to being released on blu-ray I'm going, I decided to do my list of the Star Wars movies, of what I feel which ones, for lack of a better word, are from better to worse. Just letting you know that I don't think there's any of the six films, I don't think any of them are bad, particularly, but there are certainly ones that are better than others. So, let's get started. So, number six is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I have all the DVDs, so... So, Phantom Menace is probably easily the most hyped about Star Wars movie. You remember back in 1999, like all this hype was going around episode one. It's supposed to be like the greatest. It was treated like it was be like the, oh my God, the most amazing thing on the face of the planet. Now, the problem is with episode one that George Lucas got special effects happy. Of course, with episode one and doing a prequel trilogy, he was able to explore with much more advanced technology that he didn't have at the time when making the original trilogy. So he put a lot of emphasis on really like flashy special effects, like of course, he, he wanted to make use of them, but the problem is, is that, you know, he he put, he packs in one sort of, like, one action sequence after another, you know, with, like, the opening scenes where Obi-Wan and Anna, where Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon are fighting in the Trade Federation battleship, you know, the escape from Naboo, the pod racing, the final battle in space, <clears throat> the lightsaber duels, like, they really put a lot of emphasis, and it really kind of hurts the story a little bit. Not that the story isn't too particularly great, but there really isn't a strong emphasis on story because it's one, it's too action oriented, uh, you know. So it's sort of like very detrimental in the story and the characters. But um, it does have the best, probably one of the best duels of all time, which is the Qui Gon Obi Wan Darth Maul duel, and that that's sort of like a redeeming factor. A, but it's hard to redeem a film that has Jar Jar Binks. So, <clears throat> the next film on the list is number five. For number five is Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Now, <clears throat> with Attack of the Clones, it seemed like George Lucas kind of shifted focus from doing like something much more action oriented, like Episode One, to doing a, a story to like doing a story that's more emphasize that emphasizes character and story driven development and that sort of thing. Now, normally, I'm a fan of this. I, mean, I love character-driven stories, but it wouldn't have been a bad thing like to make that shift from doing the much more action-oriented story to more of a romantic, character-driven story if it wasn't for, A, a terribly wooden dialogue, horrible acting job from Hayden Christensen, and almost zero chemistry between Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman. There's, like, no chemistry there, in my opinion, and it's just... So it's really hard to tell a story with like with less emphasis on action when your characters and your drama isn't that isn't strong at all. I mean, in terms of acting and stuff like that, Ewan McGregor, Samuel L. Jackson, and Christopher Lee are like the saving graces. They all do really great jobs with what they're given. And plus, the whole movie is sort of redeemed by the Battle of Geonosis at the end. You know, one of the most epic battle scenes of all time, and almost makes the movie what? Not I'm not saying the movie's unwatchable, but it really. Like, you probably, if you don't remember much about Episode 2, but just remember the Battle of Geonosis, then you should be all set. So, number four on my list is uh, Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. I know, blasphemy. Not, the, the prequel trilogies are in the bottom three, but... I do love Return of the Jedi. I think it's a great movie, it's a great addition, but... I think it just it spent a little bit too much time with the Han, with the rescuing Han Solo storyline and forgetting oh there's a rebellion going on. Uh, we're just spending all this time, you know, fuck the rebellion. We're going to focus on saving one person, and so it just makes it forget that there's a whole other larger conflict going on. However, when it starts getting back to it, it feels like a completely different movie. It feels more like a focused Star Wars movie, 
and the space battle i think there's the problem is that it takes too long and also just it takes a little bit too long for the big space battle to happen for the final duel between darth vader and luke to happen but still it's a really good movie and it's a really satisfying conclusion to the whole star wars saga now my for number three i put star wars episode three revenge of the sith now you know, I, I feel that Revenge of the Sith was sort of George Lucas being able to find the happy medium between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones and deliver a story that is still like very drama, very character oriented, but still packs some really great action sequences, like moments that really keep you on the edge of your seat. Uh, this is by far the darkest installment of the Star Wars saga, and as you know me, if you're ever watching any of my videos, I really like dark storylines, dark stories. Not that I'm a dark person, but just those kind of aspects fascinate me. Uh, we finally see here. We finally see Anakin push the dark side, uh, in, and really start you know, and the whole wiping out of the Jedi, and that sort of thing. That all plays out in Episode Three. Uh, the wooden dialogue, though, is still present. Uh, it is saved, you know, but the whole it's kind of taken aside. It took a yes. There is still wooden dialogue, but you have a really like you know one of the saving graces is again Ewan McGregor. He gives a really fantastic, moving, and powerful performance as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Plus the final duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan, which is probably the grittiest, most personal fight in the Star Wars saga. I think it's really great. I think this, like, this is what the moment that, like, when the prequel trilogy came out, this is sort of the moment that fans have been waiting for. And it was served out really well and really great service to the fans who stuck it out through the prequel trilogy. To, to come to episode 3 to give us a high intense, highly personal, and highly brutal duel between the, the former friends, and it was, it's worth the entire movie. Yes, there's other great sequences too, like, you know, the battle, the beginning battle on Coruscant and stuff like that, that's really cool also, but the battle, the duel that Anakin and Obi-Wan have on Mustafar is the highlight of the movie. So, number 2 for the Star Wars movies on my list is the original. Episode 4, A New Hope, or at the time when it was released, just Star Wars. M many of you guys not know this, but Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, was considered, at the time, it was released back in 1977, it was considered one of the first blockbuster movies, along with movies like Jaws. It was considered those first summer blockbuster movies that made a killing at the box offices during the summers, and the audiences would just flock to on a daily, would just flock to incredibly. Now, one of the things that's really cool about The New Hope is just one of those perfect movies. Not like perfect, like, you know, it's like the greatest thing, like, human being, like, the greatest thing ever made, you know. But perfect in the sense that it has a little bit of something for everybody. It has action, it has adventure, it has, I wouldn't say romance, because that would have been slightly creepy. So, uh, it just has a little bit of every, it has, like, political intrigue, it has, you know adventure, training, you know, all that sort of thing, and it's just, it, you know, of course, with, at the time, really great, really, like, revolutionary special effects that still fairly hold up fairly well today. It doesn't look corny or cheesy at all. It's still, like, you know, the, these special effects still really hold up today, and, you know, also you have a, you have a, ma a cast with, where the leads work really well together. They have really great chemistry. And it's just kind of funny because, you know, everybody calls George Lucas, like, the king of wooden dialogue, even though in the original trilogy there wasn't that such a thing. Because the, you know, just the, the, the dialogue was alive, you know, that also in part to the great chemistry that the characters had. So, number one, for my personal, well, I think it's the personal best Star Wars film, but my personal favorite, no surprise, is The Empire Strikes Back. Now, The Empire Strikes Back, a without a doubt, the best Star Wars film. It was also the darkest until Revenge of the Sith. But what makes The Empire Strike Back so great is just, it doesn't hide the fact, it's not ashamed of the fact that the bad guys technically win. And, you know, for a summer blockbuster where it's supposed to be about adventure and, you know, high fun and high, you know, like, you know, where you want to watch a movie to watch the good guys win, you know, and get, you know, be victorious, that's not really the case. And, you know, and George Lucas and the guys behind it, like Irvin Kirshner and everybody else involved with the film, really does, you know, a great job with this movie. It was so much, you know, A, the chemistry between Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher as Han and Leia was just absolutely fantastic. It was probably one of the few selling, probably one of the major selling points of the movie was the fact that they had great romantic chemistry together. And, you know, the, 
you learn more about the Jedi and the Force, uh, the whole the shocking revelation about Darth Vader being Luke's father, and it's just it's a really like it's a film that just it it's just it's a great movie and I just I love it. That's just the bottom line is that I love the Empire Strike Back. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it for today. If I can do a third video this week, I will. I don't know for sure. But uh, I'll try to find one in if I can. I have a few topics roaming around my head of what I want to talk about. It's probably going to be either a personal vlog or I'm going to be talking about a current event. Uh, but once I figure out what I'm going to talk about, I'll definitely make a video. So, All right, well, that pretty much covers it for today. Uh, just letting you know, just doing a quick recap, the list from worse, again I don't like using the word worse in this case, to best is The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith, A New Hope, and The Empire Strikes Back. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and if you guys want, uh, I want to hear what you guys think of what, on how you would list the Star Wars movies, or more importantly, just to make things much simpler, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Uh, if I, you know, if I get enough results from you guys, the feedback, I'll post it in the next video, in the next list video, as a result. I just definitely want to get your guys' feedback on what you think. So, that's pretty much it for today, and I will talk to you soon. Alright, peace.